Welcome to our Blazing Trees Tubecast, Episode 7, Messiah King of Glory. I am calling you, my beloved children, deeper into my heart to experience more of my glory. Deep calls to deep. The further you journey into my majesty, the more you will understand your purpose and calling in this short life. I fill your lungs with breath. I spark every beat of your heart. I am with you through every challenge, and my love for you cannot be measured. I made you to display my greater glory through your life. I am your salvation shepherd, and you are the crown of my creation. I shaped you in your mother's womb, and I have seen all your days, an unpredictable adventure bridge from first to last breath. Before I set the first star in the heavens, I knew that you would not be able to follow me without help. I designed you to depend upon me, but the world offers a thousand paths to meaning and identity apart from my sovereign will. For this reason, I made you free. If you did not have a choice on whom to worship, you would not truly be free. I love you so much that I have allowed you freedom to decide the mark of your affections. I know what you need, and I know what is best for your life, but to grant you true freedom, I have allowed the fallen one to make himself a competitor for your heart's desires. I want everyone to be saved and know the truth. Through waves of many generations and the rise and fall of kings and their domains, I have sent many messengers to speak the truth in love. So many signs, so many wonders, yet my creation still chooses to dream and live and love without me. You see, when you choose me, you must follow me and walk in righteousness. I am holy. In me there is no sin or wickedness, no shame or failure. I am the Ancient of Days, the Majesty on High, the Creator of Heaven and Earth, your Messiah King of Glory. You do not know what you need. I know what you need, and what your deepest need will always be is me. I made you beautiful, but not perfect. I made you strong, but not wise. I capped creation with your presence, but I left a space in your heart for worship. Every day dawns with fresh mercies and gifts of grace. As the planet spins along her path around the sun, so I am moving you ever closer to myself, so that you will taste and see the truth, so that you will clearly hear my voice and humbly surrender to my call. Can you hear my spirit speaking? Can you sense my revelation flowing like a river from heaven to earth? Be still and listen. You are always welcome at my communion feast. Forsake the cheap delights of self-worship and return to where you belong. Let's read some passages about our Messiah King of glory. Psalm 104, 13 to 35, Creation Shepherd. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered. 
the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All the creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 4, 2-6 Glory Canopy In that day the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the survivors in Israel. Those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy, all who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. The Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. He will cleanse the blood stains from Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble there a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. Over everything the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter and shade from the heat of the day, and a refuge and hiding place from the storm and rain. Acts 7, 44-60 Persecuted Prophets Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness. It had been made as God directed Moses, according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them, and when they took the land from the nations, God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor, and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the Righteous One. 
and now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and, yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Hebrews 1, 1 to 12, Radiant Majesty. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So, he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will row them, roll them up like a robe. Like a garment they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. Revelation 1, 9-18 living one. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. 
When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. What do we see in these stories? Psalm 104 reveals our creation shepherd. God cares for his creation. He knows every animal and plant. He brings light to and waters the world with abundant life. Isaiah 4 reveals a glory canopy filling heaven. Our Messiah King will saturate heaven's skies with a canopy of Yahweh's glory, filling the new heavens and earth with majestic light. Acts 7 reveals the suffering of persecuted prophets. To speak for God is to embrace a life of persecution and suffering. We share in Jesus' suffering because we love him. Hebrews 1 reveals the radiant majesty of our salvation champion. God's beauty, majesty, and glory are captured in our anointed Messiah King. Salvation is here. Taste and see that it is good. Revelation 1 reveals Zion's living one. Our Messiah King of glory is alive. He died to save the world and God raised him back to life to bring all nations home to heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending a Messiah to save us. Thank you for rescuing us from a prison of our own making. We are just like our ancestors. You offer light and we choose to wander in darkness. You knew we would reject your love and even in this betrayal, you sent the anointed king to deliver us. Jesus holds the keys to death and he holds the keys to Sheol. And you have given him the keys to the kingdom of heaven and the kingdoms of earth. And even now you are bringing everything under his feet. How beautiful are the feet of heaven's salvation warrior who brings in the harvest and claims victory over all his enemies. Your glory is the changing colors awakened by dawn. Your glory is the changing tides of vast oceans. Your glory is the countless stars in space. Your glory is the birth of a newborn child. Your glory is a husband and wife who stay together through every trial and temptation. Your glory is a young man who repents of his thirst for wickedness and lays down his crown at your feet your glory is a human slave rescued from the pit and adopted by a family who embraces her as their own. Your glory will fill the earth and the nations will see you and discover that all they ever wanted has always been complete in you. Father, let your hope fill the earth in our generation. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done here as in heaven. Please release an anointing over us that cannot be measured or understood, only experienced and multiplied. As we rest in you, as we wait for your return, baptize us with faith and boldness as we seek first and only your kingdom and righteousness. Thank you for showing us your glory. We are so unworthy. Now is the time to reflect on what we have learned, what lessons you have been teaching us. Now is the time to consider the journey we have tread. Now is the time to seek clarity of your will. Now is the time to say, speak Lord, for your servants are listening. We don't want to build our own kingdoms, and we don't want to dream our own dreams. 
We want to live for you. We want to release your truth to all the nations. Thank you, Messiah King of glory. Thank you for raining down forgiveness in the place of wrath. Thank you for unleashing peace in the place of judgment. Thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way for your sons and daughters to receive your spirit, obey your commands, and harvest bountiful fruit. Any good in our lives we attribute to your presence, provision, and protection over us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So be it. Thanks for listening, and thank you for all the love and support. Let's keep making healthy disciples in every nation until there's no place left.